Hi all, I thought I'd look at a few more Larson games, uh, especially where he's beaten w world champions in the past. And what better to start than his uh, defeat of Fisher? Mind you, he only beat Fisher like twice out of, um, and he lost about 11 times. Um, to be fair to him, when, when he lost 6-0 in the in the run-up to, to Fisher's um, world championship victory, um, I think I think Larson mentioned the the temperature and, and the sun was against him. He wasn't used to it. But um, so, so maybe that, that Fisher whitewash wasn't totally representative of Larson's abilities. But anyway, back in uh, 1970, we had the Palma de, de Mallorca, Mallorca um, tournament in round nine. Fisher had this shock defeat. So Larson was black in the Sicilian defense. And it looked you know, like the sort of opening that Fisher would usually hack up any opponent. You know his typical sort of you know against the Sicilian defence. You would think Fisher's absolutely lethal, and he was. But in this particular variation, which I think is called a Velimiric variation of Sicilian, apparently he, he wasn't uh, great statistically. So uh, Larson is playing, you know, kind of with provocation here, with this uh, sort of simplistic approach of um, pretending everything is okay and just castling kingside. Knowing that Fisher is going to castle uh, Queenside and launch all his pawns to, to attack him, so that's essentially what happens now. Queen e2 of the a6, White castles Queenside. So would you like to face Fisher with this onslaught of pawns, which is about to happen on maybe the G and H files? As it turned out, I've, I've done some analysis with um, a, di a different engine this time, by the way. So that's something called Stockfish. Uh, to st and I'm not. I'm not going to turn it on during uh, the thing. I'm just just going to run some past variations recorded, and I want to show you a very interesting idea of speeding up White's attack, just just from a theoretical perspective, but only briefly. Here, Fisher played g4, and I wondered, you see, why Fisher's attack was a bit too slow for Larson. So Larson was incredibly uh, resourceful in this game, and there's a particular move I think which really slowed down Fisher's attack in a surprising way. Um, but um, I do want to mention something at this point of knight fd7, which I believe, by the way, was an, an innovation from Larson. Fisher wasn't expecting it, but I think there's a, there's a fantastic idea that exists in this position because of this queen being on c7. Um, I think the fantastic idea, which I don't know if Fisher sort of uh, con considered it at all, was knight f5. See, I've been looking at some variations here, and this knight f5 instead of h4. <coughs> Pardon me. So knight f5, because after e takes f, knight d5, so getting a tempo, getting a strong knight on d5, but there's a dislocation of, of the black position here, which gives gives him an important tempo to build up a crushing attack, I think. So say queen d8, g takes, and the idea is simply uh, to play something like queen h5, and then swing a rook to the h file, like rook g1 to g3, or g4 to h4, h3. So this, this is just an example variation of that idea. So the queen coming in. You see, the point is, Black's attack hasn't even started yet in, in this kind of position. And he's faced this onslaught with a bishop takes h6 coming in. Uh, so here's, here's just an example variation. Uh, I'm just, just showing um, all down the line to, to a mate. So that's the sort of disaster which uh, this knight f5 would, would seem to um, create. Uh, it's, it's, it seems to be a very nice uh, logical peace sack exploiting the queen uh, position on, on c7 and the g file. But um, that's a different story. Okay, so g4, Fisher played, maybe this is a slow plan, because it seems, you know, Larson was able to, um, you know, artistically get and uh, logically get the queen side counterplay he desperately needed now. So after f3, uh, because black was threatening b4, undermining um, the e4 pawn. Larson just carries on simply, you know, now with b4, all the logical moves, takes on, on b3, which is just in time because his e6 pawn is about to be undermined. He doesn't want the bishop lurking there on the diagonal. And now he just carries on logically, you know, peeling open the a file, but also gathering that important c4 square very soon, as we'll see. So fg, h5, and now this is the key moment. 
where my engine stockfish seem to be a bit crazy in this position, not really evaluating. I suppose like engines don't understand the concept of of the roads metaphor in chess, where roads can carry stuff, you know, resources attacking resources. So to close down most of the roads here, there's only one move I think which fits the position for doing that. And I think that that move. Um, will be g5, but not quite yet. First taking on d4, and now g5. And I think this is a brilliant uh, Larson idea, just to slow down the white attack. And I believe because the attack slowed down, it gives Black's attack more of a chance, and Black's going to come in with a4 with with an advantage. So he's been completely triumphant with this g5 move. Anything else, he's going to get massacred on the king side. Um, you know, so you, you don't want to allow hg and any bishop sack on h6, you know, after h6, that will just be all over. So g5 keeps Larson in the game with advantage. And it looks really strange what happened here, as if Fisher just blundered the piece. Uh, so bishop takes g5, Larson took all forcing, and now, now h6, so blocking that h pawn, you know, that's blocking um, some of the attacking resources. Now, this queen g4 seem, seems a bit silly. Because potentially there's e5, unless White's going to play knight f5, but that's that's not really Fisher's um, wish in this position. Uh, rook rook g1 after a4. Um, after takes here, you you'll see it's it seems to be surprising a lot of people that Fisher didn't play knight f5. So instead he actually played knight e6, which which seems. Uh, Evidently, from the game's intuition, just just be losing a piece to Queen C4. I know this is very very strange, but let's have a quick look at Knight F5. So if Fisher had played Knight F5, then maybe Larson could just take, and I think he's getting an advantage just with simple move. Rook takes A4, so protecting that B4 from the Queen. Um, now he just needs his Queen and Rook to coordinate, and I think you know one such example variation. I'm not sure if this is the strongest move here. Maybe it's. It's one of the strongest. Queen a7. So not only supporting the rook, but also eyeing that that sensitive diagonal there. So queen could come into e3. So maybe b3. And I think this is this is better for for black. Um, but I don't want to go too far into this. This is going to be better for black. So Fisher kind of he 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 didn't want that continuation, and he went in for this this continuation, which is like a peace sacrifice. Which doesn't seem that sound at all, uh, but it required very accurate play now from Larson. So this is move 28. So Fisher's just sacked a piece, and potentially, I guess you know Fisher was hoping these these pawns on the queen side would tell. But Larson doesn't give a chance because he focuses now his efforts on this c2 pawn. So he's pinning that c2 pawn now. And now this bishop f7, h5 is vulnerable, and the bishop's going to come back. So Fisher starts moving that a pawn. Okay, so block a, but now taking on h5. So this h pawn is potentially dangerous if it starts moving. Fisher takes on e5. Okay, bishop e2, so blockade of, of the a pawn. So can these pawns get going? But now the h pawn is, is moving. So there's some accuracy to here, snapping up white's h pawn, then starting to move the h pawn before these pawns have a chance. Um, to gain inertia, because once you've got two two pa pass pawns, um, as you saw from my blitz game versus that I am, you know, on the queen side, they can be dangerous. It's just going to steamroll black. But if, you know, Larson doesn't give much of a chance at all to these pawns. He he accurately positions, you know, his bishop on on that diagonal, and he wins um, a key pawn uh, very soon. So h3, keeping on the pressure now. So h2 is is, is imminent. E6, it's all too slow. Um, and now instead of actually um, h2, um, it, it is a little surprising perhaps that time was taken out for bishop takes c2. Um, I haven't actually calculated uh, or checked h2. It looks, it looks pretty good, but maybe there's a tactic here um, which I can't see at the moment. Uh, it looks it looks quite crushing as well. But bishop takes c2, b4, check. Now bishop d d3, and now uh, bishop a6. So he's, he's just keeping these these pawns under lock and key. Now he's slapping up that b pawn, so there's no connected pass pawns to worry about. Bishop can return back to the diagonal. Rook g2, and finally Fisher resigns. It's um, it it made it look kind of easy this. This queenside attack, but there's a key move in there that g5, which I think really slowed down Fisher's attack. And also, this knight d7, I think maybe um, 
worried Fisher it's sort of an opening innovation instead of waiting for G5. So let's let's go back in overview and summary. Um, so we have here a classic, you know, hack and slay opposite sides castling game. But with maybe you know this this idea of knight f5 would have been a real punishment for this surprise knight d7 move. But it wasn't wasn't played. So um, we have here it it seems black won this battle of ripping open the lines and trying to slow down the opponent's attack because of this key move, this one key move g5. So bishop takes g5, h6 and now rook f7. So it seems the queen is nicely positioned in fact um, for handling any knight e6. This is always queen c8, knight e6 immediately. The rook's defending against the mating um, stuff. Uh, and this a4 is just peeling open a nice square as well for the queen on c4 soon. So that it can be used here. So queen c4. So it's all it's all a little bit tragic from Fisher's perspective. It was his only loss in this twenty three round tournament. This this huge interzonal, which they don't, by the way, play anymore. It took too long, I think. So this is one of those classic, lovely, huge interzonal tournaments, and and Fisher's only loss, and and his only one of two losses to, to Larson. So it's it's a bit surprising because it seems. Um, um, you know, it was an exciting opposite side castling game, which, which uh, Fisher's if Fisher did this piece sack for these pawns, they were really successfully blockaded by Larson, um, and everything kept under control with this constant h pawn being a menace as well. Once once Larson has snapped up Fisher's pawn on, on h5, so that that causing caused a lot of problems as well. Um, so here it's just it's totally all over. You have know, takes check and then win the rook and stuff like that. Uh, please leave any comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.